Wallaby Holland is the place to be for thrill seekers looking to get their coaster fix in the Netherlands. The park is home to seven different roller coasters in a truly fantastic top three lineup. In this video, I'll be ranking all of their coasters from worst to best, and of course, this is my own very opinion. Let me make that clear. You're welcome to voice your opinion down in the comments for how you'd rank these rides because there's not always a right answer when it comes to personal preference. Starting this list at number seven is Draco. This is Wallaby Holland's smallest roller coaster and a great ride for kids. You'll find these Zero Tivoli models at parks all over the world, and this one is known as a medium installation according to the manufacturer. Now, I'm not sure what Draco exactly means, but I will say the front car looks really neat. I just don't know what it is. Like, is that a bird made of metal or something? Who knows? The one thing I remember about this coaster is that there was a bee chasing me while I was navigating getting the ride layout. If you come to this park in the summer, be prepared because there are bees everywhere and they are not nice. Number six is Condor. If there's one thing Wallaby Holland is severely lacking, it's a family coaster, which explains the jump from Draco to an intense inverted roller coaster. The other reason is because, well, this is a Vacoma SLC model and no one likes those. This was actually the original, the one that started it all, and so the park knew that the only way they could save it was by putting vest restraints on it. But not even that could really help Condor, as the thing shakes you around like crazy. Sure, you may not be getting any headbanging on this one, but in my books, Condor is just as bad as many Vacoma SLCs that have the standard over-the-shoulder restraints. Number five is Speed of Sound. Once again, Wallaby Holland decided to put vest restraints on a rough Vacoma, and fortunately this time it was actually effective. The lack of headbanging makes it so much easier to enjoy the forceful inversions in either direction. But the best thing about Speed of Sound has nothing to do with the restraints, it's actually the theming. The ride gets its name from the onboard audio which is synced up to the forwards and backwards drops. The ride visually looks fantastic, especially with the tunnel and the station building. Presentation wise, this thing gets my seal of approval, and ride experience wise, it's not half bad for a boomerang. Number 4 is Express Platform 13. Weird name, huh? Now many of you watching have probably ridden Rock and Roller Coaster at Walt Disney World in Florida. Imagine if you took that ride and put it outdoors. That's Express Platform 13. The coaster is actually very smooth for an older Vacoma, which explains why the park hasn't renovated the restraint design like Condor and Speed of Sound. It's got a pretty fun launch and a couple really enjoyable inversions which I liked, but the rest of the layout is uneventful. On the plus side, the queue line has an abandoned subway theme and it's actually really well done. Pretty dark and trippy too though, so watch where you're going. I don't think there's an argument to be made that this is not the best Vacoma in the park. That may not be saying a whole lot, but no, this is genuinely a good coaster and one that I would definitely do again if I came back to the park. The top three is really where things get good, however, starting with Lost Gravity. This was the prototype Mock Ride's Big Dipper coaster when it opened in 2016 and it's such a fun ride. The elements are actually so sharp that it sort of feels like you're on a pogo stick. The airtime moments like throw you so hard into your restraint, the hang time is awesome, and the elements are just very unconventional. If there's one area Lost Gravity could use some work, it's not the smoothest ride, and that's a little bit odd for such a recent mock coaster. But I get it, it was the prototype and they still had to work some kinks out. It's definitely something I'm willing to excuse because the layout is just so cool and unique. I personally recommend trying a back row wing seat as you feel like you're being thrown all over the place. Again, it's not the smoothest, especially compared to the middle rows, but it's worth it for the forces. Number two, Goliath. If that name rings a bell, it's because the park used to be owned by Six Flags. When they added this in two decades ago, they gave it the same name as many other coasters in the chain, and Wallaby never bothered to change it because it fits. I mean, this is the tallest roller coaster in the park and was the largest in the Benelux until Conda at Wallaby Belgium opened last year. Goliath reminds me a lot of a refined version of the Superman ride of steel clones at Six Flags America and Six Flags Darien Lake. It's an intimate mega coaster with many similar elements, but also some things that differentiate it with other mega coasters. I definitely can't think of many that feature a stangle dive, that's for sure. Goliath, for the most part, exceeded expectations because the airtime at the beginning and end of the ride were much, much stronger than I expected. However, and this is a pretty big however, the twisted hills in the middle section were a big letdown, and that's a shame because if those things delivered, this would have been one of the most underrated coasters in Europe. There was so much that I loved about Goliath, but they just barely missed the mark because of the twisted airtime hills. Still though, this is a fantastic ride and something you should prioritize when visiting Wallaby Holland. But what could be number one? Okay, that's such a stupid question. Number one is Untamed. If you disagree, then you're lying to yourself. This is literally one of the best coasters in Europe. Untamed is one of three Rocky Mountain construction roller coasters that you'll find on the continent, making it a very unique ride. It's also the only one of the three that was a conversion from an old rough wooden coaster to a steel iBox masterpiece. Untamed tries to amputate your thighs on many different occasions, and I love it. The sheer amount of airtime and the sheer power of the airtime is something that needs to be experienced firsthand. 
I could not believe how Untamed repeatedly tried to launch me into the stratosphere. Yet, nothing about the layout felt repetitive, which I know could be a common criticism amongst our MCs. Five inversions are placed in between the airtime moments, and they're all vastly different from one another, which I love. The end of the ride also weaves in and out of the ride structure, which is a great touch. It reminds me a lot of Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point. Really, all of Untamed reminds me of Steel Vengeance. It's kind of like a miniature version. I can't say enough good things about this coaster. It's easily deserving of a top 15 spot in my rankings, maybe even top 10, but I'll have to give that some thought. Anyways, that's how I rank every Wallaby Holland roller coaster. Let me know down in the comments if you agree with my list, and if you didn't, well then that's a you problem. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon. Bye guys.